This is GTV. One in a zillion. In the late 1980s, Japan became the center of the universe for two distinct art forms, video games and animation. Both were popular in Japan long before then, but by this point in time had made their way around the world. Oftentimes, the two would cross paths. For example, a popular video game might be turned into an anime series, or vice versa. There might also be a manga or feature film. Don't forget action figures. The soundtrack gets released on CD, and then those songs go on to be used in commercials for other products and services, all of which are served to promote each other. It happens all the time. This convergence is so common that in Japan, the concept has its own term, media mix. In English, the closest word is franchise or crossover, but they don't convey the exact same feeling. In that long gone golden age of Japan, Sega had a hand in letting various anime and manga series come to life in video game form by licensing these works for their 8-bit TV game machine, the Mark III, also known as the Master System. With Sega operating many different product lines beyond video games, it was possible for the company to create a media mix of its own by collaborating with media production companies eager for their works to enter the massive video game market. In 1986, Sega teamed up with anime production company Tatsunoko, best known for Speed Racer and Gachaman, which was renamed Battle of the Planets outside of Japan. It would be the first time the producers of both an anime and a video game would work hand in hand to create a new product, rather than one simply licensing the rights to the other. Sega would partially fund the anime production, receiving a degree of creative control in exchange. Tatsunoko would create the characters, write the scripts, and direct the animation, as they normally would otherwise. Sega was allowed to insert their own characters and product placements, while retaining the rights to use the series in other ventures, such as toys and games. The anime series would be a thrilling sci-fi adventure filled with fast-paced battles in deep space, something Tatsunoko does very well. Alongside the anime, Sega would develop a game featuring these characters and settings. The game would expand upon the original premise of the show, delivering the excitement of each episode in a different format. Most importantly, the game would not feel like a quick conversion, as it would be created by people who understood the source material. The full title for each was Akai Kodan Zillion, in English, Red Photon Zillion. On April 12, 1987, Zillion debuted on Nippon Television, often called Nitella for short, airing new episodes every Sunday at 10 a.m. The world of Zillion takes place in a far-off star system on the planet Maris in the year 2387. Humans have colonized Maris, often referring to the planet as a second Earth. The society there is threatened by an invasion of an alien force the Noza. Their leader, Empress Adamus, plans to invade Maris, exterminate, and replace the existing human population. On Maris, a military task force known as the White Knots becomes aware of the impending Noza invasion and enlists three soldiers, JJ, Apple, and Champ, to fight the Noza with a powerful experimental weapon, a laser-powered handgun called the Zillion. Named for its fuel source, Zelonium Crystals, the Zillion was not invented by the humans on Maris. The Zillion was originally created by a mysterious ancient civilization native to the planet. The White Knots must learn how to harness the power of the Zillion and unlock its secrets. How it works is not fully understood. Zelonium Crystals create energy inside a compartment known as the Black Box. A beam of light is then stored in the hyperization chamber in the handle and then released through the particle accelerator in the barrel. A single shot from the zillion will instantly atomize any target and is the only weapon that can destroy the Noza. The star of the show is JJ. At 16 years old, he's already a skilled soldier, though often acts recklessly. The events of each episode play out through JJ. 
One of JJ's partners is Champ. At 18 years old, he's the leader of the team. More mature and even tempered than JJ, and a highly skilled sniper, Champ fits his role perfectly. The third member of the team is Apple. Her role is the navigator. There's a lot of tension between her and JJ, and it's hinted upon that they like each other. But the two stay strictly business when on duty. Mr. Gordo is the commander of the White Knots. His assistant, Amy, is a good secretary, a great cheerleader for the team, and has a thing for JJ. Dave is the technician for the White Knots, building machines used by the team and studying the zillion to gain more power from it. Then there's Opa Opa, the star of the Sega game Fantasy Zone. He assists the White Knots whenever he can, relaying messages, surveying areas, or just offering moral support. Opa Opa is made an official full member of the White Knots by the end of the series. The Zillion isn't the only technology available to the White Knots. A variety of transport vehicles are at their disposal. The most useful over the course of the series is the Tri-Charger, a protective suit of armor that can transform into a motorized tricycle with multiple forms. The Noza forces have a detailed backstory to their characters as well. Despite looking uniform and generic, the Noza's ambitions for conquering Mardis are learned over the course of the series, mostly through the conversations between Empress Adamus and Baron Rix, the commander of her army. Over the course of 31 episodes, the saga between the White Knots and the Noza play out. The final episode aired in December 1987, bringing the story to a close. I won't spoil the ending, though obviously the war comes to a conclusion and peace is restored to the planet Mars, which I'm sure you could guess for yourselves. The Zillion story is far from finished. As Zillion aired on TVs all over Japan, Sega geared up for the gaming side of this media mix. ジリオンがゲームになった。ジェジェチャンプアップルが繰り広げる迷路アクションアドベンチャーゲーム、ノーザ軍を倒せ。フロッピーを盗み出せ。SF シンキングゲームジリオン、ゲームリーダー。正解
gun icons increase the power of the zillion, and Opa Opa icons raise the character's strength level. The zillion has three levels of power, and certain containers can only be opened with firepower from level two and three shots. Most importantly, the containers hold the five floppy disks and one red card that is necessary to destroy the Noza base and finish the game. The computer terminals use symbols for each command. They look like something from an alien language, but are, in fact, standard numbers presented as a mirrored image. There are a number of commands the terminals can execute, such as display the map, stop moving walkways, disable barriers, and warp back to the mothership for a health recharge. Each one requires a specific code. These codes are always the same, and are simply the same number repeated four times. One command, open door, is randomly generated. The open door command will allow you to get your ID card back and use it again at another terminal. The Noza base is divided into three areas marked by background color, light blue, red, and dark blue. This gives the player a sense of bearing, letting you know how far underground you are. You could also count floppy disks as a marker of progress, but the game doesn't have traditional stages and is simply one big open map. Despite the large scale of the game, there is no save or password function. You do get three continues after each character's energy is fully depleted. Once you find the five floppy disks and the red ID card, you can then issue the self-destruct sequence. You have 300 seconds to make it back to the mothership to complete the game. Also, you don't have to rescue Apple or Champ to finish the game, but the ending will change depending on if you do, mentioning whether everyone has escaped or not. Zillion, the game, would then go on sale in the rest of the world at the end of 1987. At the time, nearly nobody knew that the game was based on a popular TV show in Japan. There were reviews of the game printed in the gaming media in 1988, though its connection to the anime was left unmentioned. In addition to being the main weapon in the game itself, the Zillion exists in a physical form. In the fall of 1986, the Sega Master System was released outside of Japan in several configurations. One of these included a gun called the Light Phaser, which is identical to the Zillion. However, when the Master System was released in Japan in 1987 as an upgrade to the existing Mark III, the Light Phaser was not made available in the country. Despite this, the Zillion was released in Japan in a physical form, just in a slightly different way. The Zillion was packaged as an infrared light-based relay system, known most commonly under the brand name Laser Tag. It's also worth noting that there were two versions of this toy, one modeled after the original Zillion gun, and then the redesigned version seen after episode 10, when the original gun was destroyed and then rebuilt by Dave. The Zillion toy gun was sold in the UK and Brazil, with consumers aware of its connection to the video game, but not the anime. A second video game, Zillion 2, Triformation, went on sale in Japan on December 13, 1987, the same day the series finale of Zillion was broadcast on TV. The game would appear in the rest of the world in the summer of 1988. Triformation centers around the Tricharger, a machine featured throughout the series. The Tricharger can transform into different vehicles as well as a protective suit of armor. In Zillion 2 Triformation, a new Noza fortress has been built at the edge of the galaxy. Apple and Champ are sent to investigate, only to become captured. JJ sets off to rescue them using the Tricharger to assist him. Instead of one large open world like the first Zillion game, the style of the game has changed to a more straightforward action game. The game is divided into eight stages. JJ uses different forms of the Tricharger in odd numbered stages, maneuvering through obstacles and fending off enemies at high speed. The even numbered stages have JJ advancing on foot. These stages are linear and JJ cannot freely explore. However, the movement of the game is more than just the standard left to right seen in the odd numbered stages of the game. JJ can use elevators and enter doors to progress through these stages, mimicking the style of the original game, except that forward is the only direction. 
Triformation is a faster paced game than the first zillion, and does a better job of replicating the action seen in the TV show. Both games do provide an interesting balancing act, where the main characters and key items of the anime series are present, yet the slightly different setting feels like the events of these games could happen in any episode. Sega's plan for a media mix of their own was a success. Two original games that came from an anime TV show that had some creative input from Sega, while also serving as an advertising portal, all during the time when the Mark III and Master System reached its peak. Zillion proved that video games and anime could work together, that they didn't have to be created separately and then hastily put together after one or the other became popular. セガのゲームはとどまるところを知らないトライフォーメーションジリオン2ファンタジーゾーンを目指せオパオパ3つのゲームが楽しめるファミリーゲームズ僕が深いぜ買ってくれた父も買ってもらった僕も有効射程15メ
straight-to-video releases benefited from a lower barrier of entry compared to broadcast TV. But without a proper airtime schedule and the ad revenue that came with it, releasing all 31 episodes in English was financially impossible. As a result, the other 26 episodes never followed. Despite the fact that the complete series would never grace American VCRs, Songstress Nocturne was released on VHS alongside the first five episodes in 1990, retitled Burning Night. The OVA fit the rental format much better than the series. The longer runtime and a plot confined to one episode made Burning Night feel more like a feature film, which made up a majority of VHS releases. The set of five episodes were also released in a condensed format on a single cassette with the title Zillion The Beginning, having a runtime of about one hour. In 1993, Zillion reappeared in the United States as a comic book adaptation published by Eternity Comics. Across four issues, the adventures of JJ, Apple, and Champ continued on. What stands out about these comics is that they were written and drawn by Americans. One of the few times a series of Japanese origin would have an American release without any Japanese input. Over the next few years, Zillion would receive various reissues in Japan on Laserdisc and DVD. In addition to full episodes, some discs were mashups of clips from various episodes sold in one package, a sort of greatest hits dedicated to individual characters in the series. In the US, the VHS cassettes would eventually fall out of print. However, Zillion would make one surprising cameo in 1995 as one of the videos playing in the background of the Michael Jackson music video for Scream. In 2018, the complete Zillion series was sold as a single box set for the first time, with all 31 episodes and the OVA released on Blu-ray. The set featured the original Japanese voice cast, along with Japanese and English subtitles. Three decades after its debut, the entire Zillion series could finally be experienced in English for the first time. The world of Zillion was carefully crafted to have the intended effect of not only being a quality production, but to stand as a franchise where Sega could expand the series into different product lines, with video games being the most prominent. On the other side of the coin, Sega's funding of Zillion allowed the company to insert itself into the TV series, reaching new, untapped audiences. Naturally, the Zillion Gun and Opa Opa, both designed by Sega, are a part of each episode. But that's not all you'll find in the world of Zillion. In some episodes, wild animals are spotted in the wilderness of Planet Maris. In the opening minutes of the first episode, a cat with pointy ears and a bushy tail watches JJ speed across the sand dunes of Maris. The design strongly resembles Meow from Fantasy Star, the famous role-playing game released by Sega in 1987. Episode 24 is dedicated solely to Opa Opa, the star of Fantasy Zone and the face of Sega before Sonic the Hedgehog. Titled Opa Opa's Great Adventure, he joins JJ, Apple, and Champ on a mission, saving the day and becoming a full member of the White Knots as a reward for his bravery. In the following episodes, the sister of Opa Opa, Upa Upa, appears. In Fantasy Zone, Upa Upa is the character for Player 2. In Zillion, Dave builds Upa Upa after Opa Opa is found to be so valuable to the team that it wouldn't hurt to have another one around. Game centers are seen in the background of some episodes. Despite Sega having a hand in the production, none of the games resemble Sega arcade machines, nor are any shown in detail. 
Most of Episode 9 takes place in a game center. The sound effects emanating from inside are none other than the infamous sounds from the Atari 2600 versions of Pac-Man and Donkey Kong, which are commonly used in TV shows around the world as generic sound effects for video games. Quite unusual that Sega didn't bother to use any sound effects from any of their own games. However, in Episode 30, JJ plays the Sega Master System. The game on screen is SDI, short for Strategic Defense Initiative. SDI was released in Japan in October 1987, the same time as the Master System, and about two months before this episode aired. The game would be retitled Global Defense in the rest of the world. The game is based on the real-life military system commissioned by U.S. President Ronald Reagan in 1983. Is JJ playing a video game that is 200 years old? Or does Sega still support the Master System in 2387? Either outcome is pretty amazing. <laughs> On top of these Sega references in Zillion, elements from the series have made cameo appearances in other games. In Fantasy Star Online and Universe, a rare item called the Ruby Bullet can be found a gun that resembles the Zillion. In Devil Summoner Soul Hackers, first released for the Saturn in 1997, the player can use a weapon called the Zalonium Gun. With the success of Zillion, Sega followed up with further media mixes. Exactly one year after the debut of Zillion, Sega sponsored another anime TV show, Sonic Soldier Borgman. This series shares many themes from Zillion, such as a futuristic sci-fi world at war, advanced motorcycles, and a trio of characters, one woman and two men who lead the fight. The Zillion guns are the main arsenal of Sonic Soldier Borgman, though some weapons were renamed, which were then used in conjunction with an all-new toy line. A Sonic Soldier Borgman video game was released for the Mark III and Master System in 1988, alongside first-run episodes of the series. The game was brought to the West as Cyborg Hunter. Moving into the 90s, Sega achieved a higher level of success worldwide, relying more on original creations. But Sega continued on with media mixes into the 21st century. One of the more recent and more popular of these is Dinosaur King. It's been a long road for video game media mixes since that first effort Sega made with Zillion in 1987. The legacy of Zillion stands as a unique hybrid of anime and video game, with vestigial tales such as the light phaser and other items left behind. Zillion was the first anime produced with the support of a video game company, setting the stage for a multitude of media mixes that would come in the years to follow. For Sega, the company earned a bit of gravitas, as video games could be seen as more than playthings and share the spotlight with a more mature and respected art form. As well, radio dramas, books, figures, and other merchandise inspired by games are now commonplace, giving fans more than just the game itself to look forward to and enjoy. Zillion was the origin point for all of it. A job well done, White Knots. We salute you for your service.